Okay, so we've got two sets of data. First of them, we've got one variable data set. The second is a one variable data set with free, in a group frequency table. We're asked to calculate the, the variance, the two decimal places. We're asked to calculate the range and the interquartile range. We're going to use our calculator to do this for us. Pull up the calculator. Here's the calculator. Press on. Okay. On. Let's have a nice fresh document. Okay. So firstly for A, let's type in the ice cream sales. We need to press control, add page, and we're going to add a list or a spreadsheet. We'll give it a name here. I'll call this one ICE. And then we type in our data. We'll just type in the data over here. Got 146. Type this into your calculator now. Okay, go around and see how many calculators typed in. Nice. Have you nice one? We've done nothing in all of this time. Oh, my God. It's your chart of all this. Mine, mine's the one. Press 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 you good over here? Do you like me, sir? Sorry. No worries. <laughs> how, are we, how are we doing on the bad students? So I'm about to do Yes, I know. <laughs> so you are one of your favorites, sir. Well, one of my worst. Mm. Wow. Really? Keep typing it in. You don't have to type a single number in. Most people are finished. I have. I am. You're typing in the wrong information. What's <laughs> that? The first one is 146. Sir, I'm, I'm completed. Okay. So we've typed the information in. Um, you just double check that you, your last date entry is at 13, not 12. Yes. One of the quick ways to check have I missed the data right? Quick ways? <laughs> yeah. When you're going across a list like this, it's very easy to miss a list. Yes. Especially when there's two of the same numbers. That's a, yeah, that one's our That's hard. a silly one. Yeah, that's a common one. Another common mistake is, is not to press enter on the last value and for it to be still typing in like this, and then you'll get an error. So if you get an error, make sure you've entered the last number. So it's the same routine as before. We press menu, statistics, Stack calculations, one variable statistics. We choose our ice cream list, and we click OK, and we've got all our information here. So we need to calculate the variance. So so we should be able to get. So if we see here, this is the standard deviation. 30.84. You can pull up an item like this one. The standard deviation is here at the bottom. Has a strange looking symbol. That's the standard deviation. The square of the standard deviation is the variance, 950. 950.98. So what's your display digits uh, setting? I think I've gone two decimal places at the moment. Because so I've been which one, which one did you press? Let me change my... No, no, you're six one that you want. You can't even float three. So how do you get start Right, okay. 
So if we want to get the standard deviation, you press variables, and you've got all the stat variables from our last calculation there. You can see the mean here, and then below it is the standard deviation. That's the standard deviation, that one. If you bring that one down, it will give you the standard deviation. If you square that, it will give you the variance. So we need the variance to two decimal places, so I was in the right mode. So we do need to go back to our settings, change from float 3 into fix 2. Change to fix 2. Let's enter. When we get the variance is equal to, well, I squared it twice now. 950.98. The range. Does anyone remember what the range is of a data set? Why? How do we calculate range? We want the highest value subtracted by the lowest yeah. value. This will give us the range. You can get it here like this. So you can find the minimum max here. So if we take stat max and we subtract stat minimum, it will give us the range, which is, oh, 90. you can do that. It's 92. Do you remember how to calculate the interquartile range? Yes. Q3 minus Q1. Can we get it here as well? Q3 minus Q1. 38.5. So the interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1, which is 38.5. Okay, let's do those calculations again now for the group frequency table. Do you remember how to enter the group frequency table when you're here? Menu six, one, three. So we say one variable statistics, and don't forget to add your frequency list here when you do it. Okay? So have a go at doing that now for yourself. So, so do I have something to make a new uh... Yep. You can add them on the, to the foot next page across if you want. You can add them over here. <laughs> Oops. Thank you. 
I do not think that they were. Well, so there's only one kind of the way. Because I did the previous one, so that's it. Yeah. Absolutely. Even in the dream, there's no one. Okay, now go to. Maybe on the name, statistics, and calculations. Yeah, okay. 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 So if you remember for a grouped frequency table like this one, we need to type in the mid interval values. Okay, we should get these values. Investigation six. Have a go at this. Find this. Do this for your nap, yourselves now in pairs. Let me show you. So, if you notice, you're going to have to do a lot of recalculations. Sorry, if I can just take your attention for a minute. To save you time, we're going to have to find the, the mean and standard deviation of this data set. Then we're going to add 3 to every number in that and redo it. So to help you with that, let me just show you. If I take one of my lists like this one here, um, and if I want to take everything that's in this column, D, uh, let's take column C for instance, I can say that this equals C plus three, and it will add three to every number in that. So you can type a calculation in here like this one, so I type C plus three, and it took everything in column C and added three to it, and that will help save you a lot of time on this investigation. <coughs> so have a go at the investigation now, work together in pairs. <laughs> Nine. 
You won't get that extra question if you don't use the bird. So, yeah. are you happy that we're not going to do this? No. Neither am I, honestly. Who would be? You know, some schools are starting next week. Why don't we start right after New Year's? Then we finish early. Yeah. No, we don't. Because now, the next show week of school, we may finish earlier. We have three weeks of school break to see. What are you talking about? Four point six, one, four point six, one, four point six. Where is the voice? Where is the voice? Oh, with the. Uh, I'm still 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 still
Okay, so when you do your calculations, we should get this. What we want to see on this one is what's happening to the mean and the standard deviation of the data set. So in this first one, we have the mean is 9 and the standard deviation is 4.64. If we add 1 to the data, if we add 3 to the data set, the mean is going to move down by 3. So Here, this has gone down by 3 because we've added 3. But the standard deviation stays the same. This is because all of the items in the data set move across, but their distance in relation to each other does not. Let's have a look at that visually. Okay, can we pay attention here at this point? Try and look like good students? Everybody? Yes, let's be good students. Okay, so if we add a page, if we add a data and statistics, if I click here at the bottom, we can represent this data along this line. I press menu and I add here in the prop pop. I will change this into a box plot. Oh, that's a box and whiskers plot. So it's a box and whiskers plot for the data. And then on the menu, um, let me see if I can add B. So if you see here on this one, the shape of the box plot doesn't change. It just moves across. Mm -hmm. So the standard deviation describes the spread of the data. So obviously the center of the data is going to move across. We can see if we, if we trace through on this one. Oops. Sorry, we can see that these ones move across. So on all of these, this changes by nothing. So these ones don't change. But if we add, if we subtract, or if we add 5, then this one goes down by 2, or it goes up by 5. But notice now on these ones, when we multiply by 3 here, what happens to the mean is it also multiplies by 3. So when we multiply everything by 3, the mean is multiplied by 3. The standard deviation is multiplied by 3. So this is 3 times bigger. And we can see that is at E. So we just add, um, if I add E to the list, you can see when we multiply by 3, it gets wider. It gets wider, 3 times as wide as well as the center moving up three times as much. But when we add the next one, we want to have a look at F. Notice on F, what's happening on F is the center has been moved to minus 18, because we've times by negative 2. This is times by negative 2. 
The standard deviation is twice as wide, but it's not gone negative. Why has the mean gone negative here, but the standard deviation it hasn't? Why has the mean gone negative, but the standard deviation hasn't? Discuss with the person next to you. Why has the mean gone negative, but the standard deviation isn't negative? Squared in the Let's have a look. So if we look at the data set, the data set is F, it's this one here. All of the data items are now negative. All of the data items are now negative because we've multiplied everything by a negative, which is why the mean is negative. The data lies over here. But the standard deviation is a measure of spread. It describes how spread out the data is. That's still a length. If you imagine the standard deviation is a length in this sort of direction along the, bo the box block. So length is always positive. Whether the length exists in the negative part of the axis or a positive part of the axis, it's still a length. We don't measure in negatives. So the standard deviation will double when we times our minus two, but it's still going to be a positive value because it's a length. It's describing how far each data item is from the center. And then when we did when we multiply by 0.5 or divide by 2, it halves everything. It halves the standard deviation and it halves the mean. Now it becomes much shorter. All right. I've just gone through these questions. So in summary, the mean of a data set is called x bar and the standard deviation is sigma. If you add k to or subtract k from each member of the data set, then the x bar increases or decreases by k, but the standard deviation remains the same. If you multiply by k, then the mean is multiplied by k, and the standard deviation is multiplied by the absolute value of k. So it's positive, meaning it should it'll double it or halve it, and it will keep it positive even if k is a negative value. That's a summary of the investigation we did. Have a go at these questions now. That's it for today.